Hi, I'm Dr. Raymond Douglas. I'm an oculoplastic and orbit surgeon here in Beverly Hills, California. And today I'm joined by Dr. Pejman Cohen, who's an endocrinologist here in Beverly Hills and treats patients with Graves' disease. Today, we're going to be speaking about pregnancy and Graves' disease. And this is a very hot topic. And I look forward to learning a lot about the thyroid management during this process. But Dr. Cohen, what, what can we begin to to learn about what happens in pregnancy in, with patients who have Graves' disease? What are their symptoms and, and uh, what can you kind of tell us that they should be looking out for um, during this process? Absolutely. So uh, Graves' disease is an autoimmune condition and pregnancy is generally a state of a down-regulated immune system. And so in the situation of a woman who has Graves' disease and then becomes pregnant, a lot of times the condition actually gets better because the immune system is not as active and, and therefore the, the condition of Graves' disease actually quiets down uh, a little bit. Um, now that doesn't always happen and so women who are pregnant need to be monitored extra carefully compared to women who are, who are not carrying a baby because if the hyperthyroidism is uncontrolled, it can have negative consequences, not just for the mom, but for the fetus as well. Okay. So we really, really track patients with um, uh, Graves' disease and pregnancy carefully. It is a team effort where we're working with their obstetrician. Sometimes, depending on how severe the condition is, they may be seeing a high-risk obstetrician. Not always, but sometimes. And, um, and we're monitoring their levels uh, very carefully. Yeah. And eye disease can also happen with Graves' disease, with the inflammation and bulging, and that also typically gets better during pregnancy. Um, many people have to take medication during pregnancy uh, for the Graves' disease, including methimazole or PTU. Is that of any danger for them and for the baby? Yeah, this is, this is often a big question of, of an expectant mom because they want to do everything they can to protect their baby and they yeah. don't want to take anything that could be potentially deleterious to their, to their baby. So it's a charged topic and it's gone through some areas of, uh, of controversy over the years. In, in general, uh, the, the feeling is that during the early part of the pregnancy, if a woman needs to be on an antithyroid medication, that we generally choose propothiouracil or PTU as the pre preferred initial medication. Um, and, and that's because there are some really rare case reports of a condition called aplasia cutis, where the hair of the fetus doesn't develop in those, feed, in those um, pregnancies where the mom was taking tapazole. Yeah, okay. So during the first uh, part of pregnancy, usually the first trimester, we we tend to favor perhaps using PTU or propothiouracil. Then as the pregnancy continues, we, we can then perhaps change them over to tapazole. And the reason behind that is that tapazole may have a lower risk of causing liver enzyme abnormalities or, or putting some pressure on the liver. Now, you know, this is this is not a hard and fast rule, yeah. uh, and endocrinologists have differing differing opinions. But I think the the main take home message is that many times in a woman who has Graves' disease and becomes pregnant, the medication needs to be lowered. Mm. And so whatever medication they're on, they need the, the, the because the condition is autoimmune and, and often gets better. That medication may need to be reduced, and thyroid function tests have to be done to to monitor that and to gauge that. Okay, since the mother has Graves' disease, does that mean that the baby will have Graves' disease, or is there no relation from one to the other? Because Graves' disease is again an autoimmune problem, and there are antibodies that are uh, released in in you know measurable levels in the bloodstream of the mom, some of those antibodies can cross over the placenta and now uh, you know, get directed against the fetal thyroid and cause the fetus to develop hyperthyroidism uh, and a condition called neonatal hyperthyroidism. So we do want to check the antibodies, usually called thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin, generally in the second or third trimester uh, and see if we can find a high level of those antibodies, then we're 
especially cautious to refer those uh, pregnant women to a, a high-risk obstetrician who can really monitor the fetus and um, these uh, obstetricians have the capability to actually do a sonogram and evaluate the fetal thyroid and okay. see whether it's swollen or enlarged and make decisions about you know adjusting the medication uh, and helping the endocrinologist who is also on the team. So a lot of uh, information, but I know a very complicated topic. And thank you so much for your insights. Uh, and we can certainly, uh, hopefully, drop on those uh, a bit more in future segments. Absolutely.